I'm gonna try something out with this uh, impact wrench here. It's a cheap Harbor Freight. It's a pretty typical design of, uh, I think Campbell Haasfield. There's a bunch of different brands that make them. And I've had some in the past that worked okay. You know, they were, they were only rated at 250 foot pounds. So, you know, I never really expected a whole bunch out of them, but um, this was like one for like 11 bucks shipped to my house some special free shipping coupon thing that I did one time and it, I mean it's pretty much worthless it doesn't uh, have enough torque to even put wheels on and off I can show you right here sounds good but doesn't have the balls to take a lug nut off which if you have a impact wrench if it can't take a lug nut off then it's pretty much worthless in my book so I was gonna tear it apart and uh, see if I couldn't clean up the insides maybe free up the air passages pour it out a little bit and see if I can't make it actually be useful for something and by the way this my air pressure I've got a uh, dual, you know, two-stage air compressor. It's over 14 CFM, and it, I got it coming right out of the tank now at 150 psi, and that's that's all the good this thing would do. So I'll uh, get it tore apart and then kind of show you what I plan on doing to see if I can't get any more power. Okay, I got it. the gun tore apart, and uh, I didn't record the steps of taking it apart because it's pretty self-explanatory. There's three set screws and then there's four screws on the back and it just comes apart but I figured I'd show you what I found it looks like it could improve it a little bit this piece here is really restricted in there because it's it came with the small I believe that's quarter inch air fittings and the hole in this fitting is roughly that size. It, may, it looks like it may be actually a little bit smaller, but it does open up to about a 3 8 inch fitting on the inside as far as the hole that passes through. If I can get some light in there. There's a hole that passes through there. You can kind of see it, but it's about 3 8 of an inch which is the type of fittings I use in my garage. And they uh, pass a lot more air than the, the quarter inch ones. So that's what I'll ultimately end up putting on here. Another thing I noticed was uh, the holes in the adjustment for the speed and everything. Uh, they're really tiny, they, like that one. I don't know how you'd even get the thing to spin at all with that little hole, but I'm gonna drill those out and make them all larger. Um, particularly the, the big one, because, I mean, ultimately, you want the thing to take stuff off that's really tight. And you know, I'd probably make the other ones bigger too, but. I'll just I'll drill all those out to some extent. Something else I noticed all is this washer will have to be punched out a little bit. You can see that the washer kind of overlaps the hole going into the gun. So that's causing restriction there as well. So that'll get punched out. One thing I did remove from this piece here was uh there's a screen and then the, that metal ring that was kind of overlapping into the airway as well as you know having the screen on there so I tore that out I got filters and stuff on my line that's not gonna I'm not worried about something getting in it I probably really won't use this anyway I'm just experimenting 
I'm trying to see if I can make it work a little better. One thing I noticed with this uh, Harbor Fate crap is I took it apart and despite putting a bunch of oil into it, into the airline when I, before I used it, it was pretty much bone dry on the inside. It's full of uh, sand, like casting sand, machining sand. There's some uh, leftover aluminum from machining. It's like they must not clean this thing at all before they assemble it. And uh, like I said, this stuff's all pretty dry, even though I put quite a bit of oil into the hole before I used it. Now there is a oil plug on there that you can add oil to it. I just, I guess I assumed that when it leaves the factory they would put a little bit of oil in there. It's not like you can put a lot because it would end up leaking out all over the place, but nonetheless it's there. So just by cleaning it up and opening those two little holes a little bit, that'll probably add a significant amount of torque to it just because the thing has got some lube in it. And then next thing, this is the trigger. What I'm going to do, I'm going to take it to work in the lathe. I guess you could do it in a drill and just use a file and file it down, but I'm going to um, turn this down. Probably take about half of that off of there because this is where the when you push the trigger it moves this down and then opens the the airway and then the air passes past this cut out here so I figure making that a little smaller might give it a little more airway this here's the forward and reverse and I believe these two work in the same way that the trigger does. That is, the air passes by these to go into the rest of the, the gun. So I'm going to machine those down, cut those down a little bit, and uh, see if that helps. I figure I'm going to try to get all the air getting up to the mechanism as much as I can and see how much that improves things before I start working on the rest of it. This here is just a, uh, there's a little pin that goes in there that keeps the, keeps this from falling out. So that's all that does. So first thing I'm gonna do is get it all cleaned up, oil it, do those few minor things that I mentioned earlier. And I'm gonna see how that works. And then if I st still wanna try to see if I can't get some more out of it, I might try milling out the uh, the passageways and all the parts here like this is the exhaust ports and I'll drill those out a little bit there's some more ports in this other side here so but I'll deal with that later I'm gonna try the first things first just to see just out of my curiosity if it does any good or not if it does I got another got another piece of crap that I bought here that's just about as bad as the the one I'm working on now. So parts machine down. down. It's cut down to about half of what it was, if not more. Same thing with the uh, the little trigger nozzle there. We drilled out the fittings. The uh, this piece here. I only uh, drilled out two and four because to drill them all out, I, w I wouldn't have anything left. So, but really, that's all you would really need: two and four, two size holes like that. I had to make a new gasket because the other one disintegrated. I couldn't get it off in one piece. And uh, the only other thing I did, which I hadn't really planned on doing anything with the housing itself yet but the exhaust holes, I drilled those out to about another drill size bigger because the other ones had a lot of casting stuff in there and so I just figured to clean them up I would run a drill bit through them. So I'm gonna get it put back together and uh, I'm gonna try it out with just 
the modification so far and just see if how much of an improvement it made. Okay, here's the moment of truth with the mods I've done. Um, definitely has a lot more power than it did. I can just the sound of it, the way it acts is much better than it was. But uh, these nuts were put on with a much more substantial impact wrench. So uh, we'll see how, see how this one does. <clears throat> well, it's still not taking the lug nuts off of here. Uh, now, if they were installed with this, then, then yeah, obviously it probably would take it right off. It's definitely a functional impact now compared to what it was, but it's still not the greatest thing on earth. But <clears throat> you usually get them for 15 bucks. It's probably the most common cheap impact there is. So <clears throat> I think I might do some more mods to the motor portion of it and uh, see if I can't make it put on enough power to bust these things off yet. So till next time.